Was there anything, anything positive at all to take out of today or do we just try and forget it? It'd be great to try and forget it, but a, a lot of negatives on our market. So I guess if we have a look at positives, uh, gold did manage to go back up in Asia after seeing a liquidation overnight. It does look like a huge run into cash, and you'd see massive margin calls when you do see falls of this kind. And in the first two hours of selling, very heavy selling. In fact, if we have a look at the Australian market now down by 18% from the 11th of April, where we saw the peak for the year, we did see a low of 4,087 points today there were a lot of people saying that value is emerging on the markets but if you have a look at what's driving the market first of all concerns about the US economy and the amount of debt over there and secondly and probably more importantly right now is the eurozone debt crisis Italy very much in focus as well as Spain and if we have a look at the credit default spreads the five years on both of these well they're blown out to new records we are starting to hear a little bit of a run on banks in Italy and that's really going to be the thing to watch over the weekend because if we do see a run on the banks in Europe then that's going to speed up a policy response and that's really what the market is watching for at the moment looking for a coordinated response to the problems that we have seen in Europe and the lack of that is causing uncertainty in the market so altogether a horror session on the Australian market down four percent in just one session in fact if we look for the week down by seven point two percent for the week we have haven't seen these type of losses since November 2008 in terms of weekly losses and back then when we did see the market lose more than 7% in one week we actually saw two consecutive weeks where the market lost more than 7% each week. Where our market the Aussie market six, uh, sits a drop of 4% at 4,105 in terms of the, the charts looking at a, a technical perspective I mean where should we be looking for some sort of support at? Well, all this week we have been seeing new lows for the year, so we have been getting signals, quite bearish signals coming through from the charts from around about Tuesday. But I guess the big quick kicker in terms of technicals was the S&P 500 index. We fell through that head and shoulders formation. And if we have a look at the S&P 500 index, if I can just bring up this chart, here's the head and shoulders uh, formation. And it's like as soon as that neckline was broken, it just opened the gates towards selling. Now we are seeing these issues dominating the, the market, the big macro big picture themes but in terms of technicals we've seen it broken and the target is 1145 points I just didn't think that we'd see a halfway through that target in just one session mm. so in terms of the S&P 500 we are looking at still a pretty bearish pic picture keep in mind though when we do see big drops like that often we see a bit of a mini bounce back before the downturn re resumes and the market does also tend to overreact so when we do see big moves like this it isn't unusual to see a bounce but keep in mind the bigger, uh, the bigger thing which is fueling the market is the European debt crisis and what's happening in the US as well. In terms of the Australian market, a very interesting day in terms of technicals today as well. We were watching that double top formation and the neckline being broken there. So if we just head now to the Australian market and have a look at what's happening in terms of the Australian market. This is what it looks like in terms of the last couple of years. And you can see we've just broken through the trough that we saw in August last year. And that double top that we've seen there now targeting 4,325 yeah. points. So in terms of the technical, still looking bearish, but of course, all eyes really on the credit markets. No matter what happens in terms of equity markets, it's going to be the credit markets which really drives this euro uh, crisis. So markets are watching the credit markets very closely and throughout the global crisis, one thing we've learned is that the credit markets can dry up very quickly, in fact, in a matter of hours. So that's one thing I'm keeping a very close eye on this weekend. The, uh, the RBA monetary, the quarterly statement we got today, was a, it was an interesting uh, article. It seemed to be putting one scenario forward and then saying, but that might not actually happen this will happen. I mean, it was hard to get some sort of clarity of thought from, uh, from the RBA, except the fact that we're not growing GDP what we thought we were. Well, it looks like the number one focus is now the instability that we are seeing in terms of the global stage. And if we have a look at China, while while it has performed better than the other markets around the region you have to remember that China's growth comes from Europe as well as the US in fact if you have a look at Europe in particular it's the number one export market for China you have to uh, try and if you have to try and understand why China has been trying to, uh, to keep Europe uh, stable it's because it's the number one export market for Europe you look at the top economies in the world number one is the US number two is Europe number three is Japan and number four is China if 
we do see a slowdown in the US, if we do see a slowdown in Europe on the back of this debt crisis that we are seeing in both areas, then you're asking the number four economy in the world to carry both the US as well as Europe. So while China is stronger at the moment, it, it, I think it's a little bit unfair to say that it's decoupled enough from Europe as well as the US not to see an impact and that, the, that Australia is going to be immune. And really that's the fear, global slowdown. That's why you see a big sell-off in commodities. Mm. You saw the energy space, the material space, the worst performing sectors on the Australian market losing more than 5% today. With so much